What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another interview edition of Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman, and today I have with me Rob Viglione, the co-founder of Horizon. I've had you on several times. I hope you're doing great. Nick, I, it's always a pleasure, and yes, I, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Now, this video is going to serve kind of as a recap of what Horizon is doing right now and what they have planned for the future. So if you want more of a background on Horizon and Zen, check out my other interviews with Rob. We've been following along for, it seems like, forever now. I think it's been at least two or three years, a couple different uh, logos, a couple different visions. So essentially, they're a massively scalable platform enabling businesses and developers to quickly and affordably create their own public or private blockchains on the largest node network uh, in the industry. Is that even larger than Bitcoin? Bitcoin and Ethereum combined, happy to wow. say. Pretty yep. crazy. <laughs> I, I guess the biggest update that I think is going on right now for Horizon is the side chains and the side chain beta. Mm -hmm. I think uh, a lot of the technical jargon goes over a lot of people's heads. So I think that's why you guys aren't really getting uh, mm -hmm. the credit you deserve. So low level, high level, what's going on with the side chains uh, with Horizon? How does it benefit Zen holders, users, maybe uh, companies coming into the space? Well, Nick, you're exactly right. It is a big deal. And unfortunately, I don't think we've really done much PR around it to really advertise how big of a deal it is. And that, was, and that was actually sort of by design. So what we did a couple weeks ago was, uh, or a few, few weeks ago at this point, was we released uh, the first ever decentralized sidechain protocol in blockchain. Um, that alone should sound like a big deal, but you know, obviously we need to translate that into, well, what's gonna be built with it and why is it important for the Horizon ecosystem? Um, so if, probably start with why is it so different from everyone else? Well, it's decentralized, so it actually doesn't require centralized certifiers or humans to be in the loop to be able to say this transaction is valid. So, so if we talk about uh, other sidechain protocols, everything from Cosmos to, you know, uh, LISC to in, any of the other new ones that are hitting market, uh, RSK, these are all centralized solutions in one degree or another where they have some trusted party that's kind of in that loop, whether it's like a, a DPoS type of system or delegated proof of stake where you have kind of many parties, but they still are humans in the loop that are certifying transactions Ours does away with that, and we generalize the protocol. So it's truly a base layer protocol that anyone can build. Really, anything that re that you could do with a blockchain, you could do with Zendu now. Mm -hmm. And the the kind of SDK or software developer kit that launches a blockchain that is a, a side chain out of the box launches something that's very Cardano like. It's actually the Ouroboros Prowse uh, proof of stake protocol. So now what you get with Zendu, which is the Horizon sidechain protocol is basically like a version, like a proof of stake sidechain that's very robust, academically peer reviewed and so forth. We modified to be interoperable with the Horizon main blockchain. Uh, and from there, we, we you know, give the developers an SDK that they can extend into really any application domain. So uh, essentially at the end of the day, what we've done is we've pushed in the Horizon ecosystem, we've pushed development from the protocol layer up to the application layer. And, and that's a really important big deal. These side chains eventually are going to allow you not only to work with current crypto companies, but actually non and traditional uh, companies as well that want to run a side chain for various reasons. Is that correct? Exactly. So, you know, the, the last couple of years that you've been following us, Nick, we've talked a lot about blockchain kind of like geeky stuff. Uh, this is the first like, big, really huge delivery for us where we go from being a blockchain that supports a cryptocurrency to one that's an open platform now for real business applications to be built on. So now the race is for the real applications and we have a lot of fun stuff going on there. Uh, some, some good announcements upcoming, but now it's really, we're gonna be talking about real world applications, partnerships and getting Zendu and, and ultimately Horizon in the cryptocurrency that, that is interoperable across the entire system uh, out there into the real world and to things that go beyond just, hey, Rob sending Nick some Zen. Right. I thought you were going to slip up there on some of the partnerships, but you caught yourself this time. <laughs> <laughs> I also noticed you, uh, that you mentioned Ouroboros and Cardano ADA. Uh, they just yeah. had their conference. They're doing really well. And I think it's good to remind people that you do have a working relationship with Charles Hoskinson and IOHK as far as uh, they've helped you in the past with uh, some of the stuff uh, that was built on Horizon. Is that something you guys are continuing to have that open relationship? Is there still discussions between you guys and how you guys are both working to make both pro uh, projects better? and maybe work together in the future? Absolutely, so as of now, you can view us as a sort of tech consumer of, of research that IOHK has done, and we still work with IOHK. So we have we work with a, a specialized group within IOHK called Team Veritas, 
And essentially they're a, a super crypto heavy group, like cryptography heavy group. So we work with some of the best research scientists in, in, uh, um, in, in Ukraine where this particular group is located uh, through IOHK. So that relationship is, is kind of a cornerstone of our uh, you know, cutting edge stuff that we're doing. So with the work with Zendu that you see, th this was a massive two year development project that started from you know, the idea, the invention, the concept to you know, a few weeks ago when we delivered the beta preview. And actually next week on the 15th, we're gonna be releasing the official beta, mm -hmm. uh, which is, is kind of a big deal for us. Uh, th this stage included something like 114,000 lines of code, 1200 software files that are part of this kind of modular architecture, three new cryptographic libraries, uh, and a technical, like basically um, an academic white paper that was peer reviewed within IOHK uh, with this Team Veritas uh, cryptography group that we work with. All of the stuff culminated, massive effort, uh, and really opens the door for Horizon now to be used as an application platform. That's awesome. And I think that's really uh, what people are looking at now is platforms in the ecosystem as they feel that those drive real world value and real world utilization moving forward. So it's yep. good to see that Horizon is finally getting to that point and uh, just, isn't, just isn't a monetary system for Zen. So Right. And um, actually, Nick, so one corollary to this is let's talk about the economics of it. So the economics of this and why is, why is Zendu so important for you know, Zen, the cryptocurrency, the, the coin you can go out and buy today is because Zen is, is really that transaction glue across the entire ecosystem. So when we have a value chain in a decentralized like side chain blockchain of blockchains infrastructure, all of the elements of that value chain, everyone from block forgers to, to you know, GPUs that we think we're gonna have a specialized GPU farming community basically that they can actually process snark transactions and get paid to, to process snark transactions. Like how cool is that? A marketplace for right. processing snarks uh, to block, you know, uh, block miners on the main chain to people that you know, host nodes that run the, run the side chains. All of these people throughout the value chain are going to be paid in Zen transaction fee. You know, basically Zen appended to transaction fees from side chains. Now this means that Zen is all of a sudden going to have like an Ethereum like utility with a Bitcoin like truncated money supply, which is a very interesting value proposition from like, an economics perspective. Right. For those of you who don't know, the token economics behind Zen are pretty strong. They have the same happening system. Also, the 21 million uh, total supply cap on Zen. Mm -hmm. And then I was also going to bring up and ask, you know, what what is it for long term holders? Why are they so excited for side chains? And when you look at it, it's because they have the theory or the hypothesis, or maybe it's fact that once these side chain applications are built, their Zen nodes are not only going to be earning inflation rewards, but they're also going to be earning transaction rewards. So the more use of the side chains and of the blockchain, the more long-term holders, Zen super node runners, secure node runners and miners uh, earn in the form of Zen as well, in which they can trade it, hodl it, or use it on these side chain applications moving forward as well. Exactly right. What we envision is basically a node marketplace going forward. It's really exciting. So I guess that moves us on to the next topic, which is HEAP. You know, what is HEAP? First of all, what is the acronym? And then do you wanna discuss a little bit about what's going on there? Heap is the Horizon Early Adopter Program. So this is, okay, the, the big strategic shift for Horizon now, and, and this is not, not something unplanned, very much planned over, over the last couple of years, was now that we finally have Zendu out, out uh, on market, and, and by that, I still mean it, it's on testnet. Uh, but now that Zendu is out there and we have these developer tools, now we're pivoting the machine that we've built on new user acquisition, community building, community engagement, all of these things, incentives to do work in, in the ecosystem is being shifted and focusing on developers, All right? So this is a huge shift for us and something that we're, you know, we built the machine and put the cogs in place for it. Now we're just turning it on and pointing it in this new direction. Um, so Heap is, you know, a fundamental element here where, where developers that want early access to all of the tools, early access to the team, you know, to talk to, you know, everyone from the developers who built the SDK to our chief architect, to, to me, to anyone, um, I have early access, they have uh, you know, free access to webinars. We're putting together tutorials, uh, a whole bunch of other you know, developer you know, tools and, and access elements. You get specifically if you join Heap. Uh, now, this is you know, for us the start uh, of something that we call it now a Horizon Early Adopter Program, but it's going to evolve into just um, our Horizon community you know, uh, development pro you know, you know, program over time. And then I guess that goes with that is uh, the HDE that you guys are doing. And I think you guys just made a tweet uh, right before we went live. So you might not even have seen that, but I think you guys have a new bounty 
uh, going on right now. So what is HDE and is that really for anybody to get involved or you need to have some kind of developer sense or how's that work? Yeah. So you're, you're, you're seeing the elements kind of like the different um, you know, pillars of this kind of multi, multi-faceted strategy we have. Now, so with uh, Zenju SDK and Heap, the third element is Horizon Developer Environment, HDE. And this is our, our solution to a couple of problems that we saw in open source and really adding economics and better kind of uh, you know, like uh, curation environment to open source. So the two elements of open source we're trying to fix here, number one, if you come across an open source repository, how in the heck do you know what to do, right? You're joining a community of dozens, if not hundreds of developers who are actively working on a project. How do you know where to pick up? How do you know how to productively contribute? Well, uh, HDE is about curating the opportunities to say, hey, look, from a, a beginner level, if you're, if you're like a college student trying to learn how to program, we have a bunch of tasks for you. All the way to if you're a senior developer or an architect, we have tasks for you that are value-add contributions to our live repositories. And then we, we talk about the second issue with open source is, you know, we want to actually pay people for work they do, you know, in, in kind of like right. a decentralized work environment. Consider it like a decentralized Upwork, like one of these like uh, crowdsourced work environments. We combine the two into HDE, and this really cultivates now the third pillar to our program. You've got an active SDK with the first decentralized, you know, um, sidechain protocol in the world. You know, with Heap, the early, early adopter program with curated tools for you, with the HDE, with actual bounties and curated work opportunities. Right. Yeah, I always thought HDE, when you first launched it, was really interesting and exciting because, like you said, open source is great and grand, but you need to get people, first of all, to, to come develop on your project and incentivizing them with your native cryptocurrency is obviously a good way to do that. But also then it allows you to maybe cultivate your own development team moving forward. If somebody's doing a lot of bounties or doing really good yes. work, then maybe you bring them on as a full-time right. developer. And then, like you said, even the lower level tasks, maybe that's somebody who's a senior doesn't want to take the time to do these, what he right. calls just, you know, just hard brainless work. So uh, you can get people on there that are new to developing, allow them to earn Zen, learn more about it. And these tasks do need to get done at some point in time. So. Right. And for me, like, I'll just tell you, we want to give Zen away. That's our plan here. Our, our goal is we want to give as much Zen away as we can possibly give but we want to do it in a productive way that actually adds value to the ecosystem because I view every Zen that we give away and every new person that we have productively contributing adds to our long-term governance. Like ultimately we want to have a wide, a wide cross section of different types of people in our ecosystem. And those that are actually contributing productively are those kind of people we want. We want them to actually have a voice and to have a voice, you know, give you some Zen. And I think that's why you guys have such a large node network is really any of these people who are getting involved, I'd say, at least 80%, 90% of them spin up a bare minimum of one secure node to see what's going on, earn some passive income on top of the bounty they earned. And then maybe in the future, the governance will get to a point where you have voting rights based on uh, your nodes, which I think is kind of the plan down the road once side chains uh, start launching. That's exactly right. Yeah. So one of the, the first like infrastructure side chains we want to build and call it like a, a public utility for the ecosystem is a voting system. Uh, and voting system could tackle many issues. The biggest issue that I see is we, we want solid kind of, we, we want to get true community sentiment for decisions that we make. And ultimately the biggest decisions that you make are how you allocate resources. So we want to democratize the treasury pool that we have. Uh, and the best way to do that it, with the technology that we have is to build a voting side chain. There you go. Well, ahead of the curve there, ahead of the curve. <laughs> now we, we've seen a lot of positives here. We know the history of Horizon. We know where you guys have come from. Uh, we see Zendu, which I think at this point is very underrated. So you guys should do some research on that mm -hmm. and understand what side chains mean for the economics or the potential economics of Horizon. And then if you want to get involved and earn some free Zen, you got Heap and you got HDE. But, you know, you guys do have Grayscale. Now, Grayscale, this is a big thing. You guys are like one of 10 coins in which they support. It started off with a bang. You know, you could see almost on the exchange that they were market buying some Zen based on the, the volume that was going on there. But lately their total balance has remained relatively flat, which means they're not selling it, but they're not really adding Zen uh, like there were previously. Mm -hmm. What really drives this? Is this grayscale? Uh, is this new investors? Is this you guys scaling back or you guys have to have another investor meeting or what's really going on there? Yeah, so I would say I would love to have another investor meeting. I, I think this is a, a fundamental disconnect that we have with say the market. So I, I, I think given the, the level of maturity of our project, the, the high quality of the team, and the products that we're spinning out in, you know, realistically very short timelines for the sophisticated engineering products. 
we're, we're for sure underrated. You know, if you look at our fundamental crypto asset score, we're an A-rated project. I think we're back in the top 10 of any project in, in the entire industry of thousands, right? So, so you can see there's a disconnect between, you know, like, like value or, or I would say quality and, and market price. And, and I think this flows through to say the, on the institutional level or the accredited investor level, which is exactly where Grayscale is. So Grayscale with the Horizon Investor Trust launched a trust product that you know, accredited investors can get into right now. It's still not open yet to retail investors, but there are plans to, to open it up to actually to get it listed on exchange and retail investors to be able to trade it, into it. Um, it's not there yet. So this is kind of the next phase for us is now that we have kind of the unique differentiating technology where we are defining the tech frontier for sidechain technology, we are defining the tech frontier for like usage of SNARKs in the real world. Next up is big partnerships and getting people to actually use our technology and then institutional awareness and then just, you know, broader uh, investor awareness. Now I say broader investor awareness, but uh, you know, the foundation that we have is actually, maybe this is one of the issues. The foundation is all about science and technology and community building. It's not about actually maturing markets. And this is where we rely on third parties like Grayscale, Genesis Trading, DCG, Horizon Labs as, as an instance, right? So we have partners that are out there that are maturing markets and going out and educating people about it. That's actually not what the foundation does. Um, but you, you see the next level, this is kind of like a, a multi-level strategy that this really coming to fruition after years of you know, careful cultivation and a lot of heavy lifting and hard work. Um, Near-term phases though, will be educating institutional investors. And actually there will be an announcement in say, I, I think it's in a matter of weeks now with, uh, you know, some institutional outreach uh, that's been going on with one of our partners. Uh, looking forward to that. Make note of that guys. A couple of weeks, <laughs> institutional outreach. Yeah, make, so make, make note of the, the p politician in me not actually giving you a firm answer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sounds like the relationship with Grayscale is good. Uh, obviously, oh, yes, the, the uh, flattening of the curve as far as them buying more Zen is due to they just don't have new investors looking to add to, to Zen at this point. Uh, but they do have a partnership with Coinbase Custody. Zen was also added to Coinbase Custody. And we just saw Zen be added to the shortlist for Coinbase. Now, I don't know what you know, what you don't know, and you're going to probably do a politician answer here as well. Uh, obviously, if Zen got added to Coinbase Pro or Coinbase, that would be uh, very good to start tapping into those retail users and investors because they get a lot of beginners over there or a lot of U.S. residents. Um, is there any process in which you reached out to Coinbase? Did they do it randomly? Did they reach out to you? Did you have to fill no, so out paperwork I, or how does that work? Yeah, what I can say is our team has been in very close contact with them for a while. Uh, we've actually, they've been in, in a, a serious due diligence process with us for some time. Uh, now, what, what I can say is Coinbase is one of the most professional teams out there in the industry, and they, they have a complete firewall with anyone, like including us. They will never let a team know how you're doing in the diligence process. They'll just ask for information. We give them information. We comply with everything. Uh, one big element for us that was a, a big win was the Crypto Rating Council. So this is uh, kind of a, a legal opinion of, of how close does Zen, uh, our cryptocurrency, resemble the security, right? And the, the closer it is to security, the less likely you are to be listed by Coinbase. They just don't list securities because they don't want to, you know, come into regulatory issues with, say, the SEC. Now, the, the CRC ranking goes one to five, one being you're not close to being a security, and this is what Bitcoin is, to five being you're, you're almost definitely a security, we're not touching you. Uh, Zen was ranked one. So really oh. proud of that result, which actually, I think we're top five in the entire industry of, of like Bitcoin, it's Bitcoin Zen and, you know, a few others that are, are just nowhere close to being, you know, considered a security. Right. So, yeah. And you keep telling us about all these, you know, the fundamental score has you guys as like a top 10 project, A rated. Uh, yeah. Now the security score has you as a one on par with yeah. Bitcoin like top and that, five in the industry. Exactly. Right. And, and that, that mirror, that's because you mirror the distribution method of Bitcoin really, and even go a step further with uh, the two tier node structure on top of the proof of work. Um, and then the plans of side chains and governance. So it's really interesting that we see almost this fundamental disconnect between what you guys are getting rated by third parties, not yourself. And then what the market is really, you know, valuing uh, your utilization of Zen moving forward. So yeah. We'll see if that disconnect continues. Obviously, you guys aren't a micro cap anymore. You're in the top 100, so that's great and grand. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see if more of the retail user base starts to pick up on some of the platforms uh, that you guys are creating that hopefully they can use or companies can use moving forward. Well, Nick, part of this uh, that I'll add to, to this, this segment of the conversation is you can see we're laying the infrastructure for some big things, right? Everything from getting the Grayscale Trust in existence 
it's huge, right? right? Not, like you said, there's 10 products in the world, 10 Grayscale products, we're one of them, right? So this is the infrastructure now for accredited investors and then ultimately will be retail. Got Coinbase custody recently, which is really important for institutional custody, offloading to Coinbase uh, custody. Um, on the short list for Coinbase listing, you know, and there were actually some other big ones that were kind of in, in talks with right now. Another big deal actually recently, uh, we talked about this uh, in the pre-conversation was uh, Binance had added a USDT pair, a tether pair for yep. Zen, which is critical. And now our organic uh, volume on, on Coinbase, uh, sorry, on Binance is increasing. Uh, you're starting to see people actually come in, third parties do some market making. So our markets are maturing. You're seeing the infrastructure laid here uh, next up would be, you know, in, in my ideal world, and I'm not making any predictions, but, uh, you know, we're not yet on Binance US. This is a big target for us, right? So um, getting vol organic volume up on Binance in general is really important. But the USDT pair was critical because here's where actually you get professional traders come in. They can actually execute professional strategies because now they can do hedging and actually you know, go from USDT to B BTC to BNB to ETH. So when the USDT pair was added, now volume on the other pairs is now increasing. So, and then later on some market making on there, the third parties are doing, uh, I'm really bullish on everything that's, that's going on. And you're just seeing the infrastructure laid from the CRC ranking to everything that we're doing. It's, it's going professional and it's, it's going big time now with uh, future partnerships now the Zen News on market. I, I could not be more bullish on what we're doing. Of course, we never make price predictions here. We're not about that, but you know, in terms of project fundamentals and then turning fundamentals into real world usage. I mean, we're, we're, yeah, I, I could not uh, be more excited with where we're going. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Right, and I was gonna bring up the Binance USDT pairing because I do have uh, people reaching out to me and they were like, hey, the Zen volume seems to be decreasing. And that was right before the Binance USDT pairing uh, at a time when Binance is actually delisting other project pairings due to low volume. So we're actually choosing to list Zen with the USDT pairing. So I think that uh, shows you that Binance is bullish, not on the price of Zen, but on the right. volume and the market maturity of Zen moving forward by adding that pair. Um, and then going back to Binance.us, uh, I think the security score of a one obviously opens up a Binance US listing because I know one of the major criteria of Binance US, similar to Coinbase, mm -hmm. is uh, regulation in the United States and not listing securities on their platform as well. So I think that's a, a, another good opportunity uh, there. Agreed. Yeah, I, I won't uh, add anything else because I'm that politician, but I, I totally agree with you. <laughs> and then I guess really the last thing I want to discuss before just kind of seeing if I missed anything was uh, kind of a celebration. You know, Sphere is your guys' flagship wallet, your flagship product that you're pushing people to. Yeah. Uh, I run super nodes out of Sphere, works really easy, synchronizes fast, blah, blah, blah. But it just reached 100,000 downloads. Now, that's, that's a great number. Are you guys seeing that as unique downloads? Are these the same people on multiple devices or is this truly, you know, the community growing uh, or is that 100,000 number, is that wallets generated within the sphere? Download? No, no, it, it, it's unique downloads of sphere. So for sure it, it's new community members. Now, now the caveat here is if they had another Zen wallet and sphere, we still count them in each category, like kind of one, mm -hmm. one check mark in each category. Um, but this is, it, it, at least now we have 100,000 instances of sphere running. And of course, many instances of wallets and addresses within a single instance of Sphere. Right. Uh, now, this is a big milestone for us, but it's just a start. And I would not be happy if we close out the year but with just a marginal increase from here. I want to see these numbers go exponential. And I, I mean, playing around with Sphere, the reason I like it is you built everything into it. There's news in there with your Twitter feed. Uh, you have batch withdrawals. So if you run nodes yep. and you're earning rewards, you're able to take those rewards and do as you please with them without disrupting the underlying node that you have running on the network. And like you said, you can open multiple wallet addresses all within the same sphere download. That way you don't have to have multiple downloads, multiple, multiple computers, and everything's right there. Uh, easy to name, easy to play with. So I think you guys are doing really good on sphere. I know you guys had some previous uh, wallets that you kind of uh, said, forget about those, join sphere, you'll like what we're doing. And uh, some of the recent upgrades really made the usability Simple. Yeah, you know, Nick, thanks for, you know, I appreciate the, the feedback. What, the difference with uh, what's been going on with Sphere is we brought it in-house. So we went from having a third-party development shop building it to now having our in-house engineering team. And, you know, our in-house engineering team is just world-class. So you should expect to see uh, a continuous stream of important improvements. The most important improvement to Sphere coming out in the very near term is actually, it's coming out with beta for Zendu. 
is a Zendu compatible Sphere instance. So you're gonna see for developers and for people just using sidechains, now Sphere will be the GUI wallet for uh, the sidechain ecosystem. So that was actually a lot of development went into that. But Nick, one thing that we would be really important, I would hate to miss out on talking about is uh, with respect to the growth of our community and just the growth machine that we have within Horizon, um, the, the growth machine that we built was at least to Barry Silver and DCG impressive enough to spin off its own independent company. So what we've done recently was we, we launched a spin off from the foundation and Horizon Labs uh, with DCG, uh, a company called Pipeline Marketing. It's now the, the latest addition to the Horizon ecosystem. It's a growth technology company uh, building out on uh, in Horizon ecosystem. So it's getting new user acquisition in, into Horizon, Zen, and then ultimately uh, sidechains. So this will be kind of like a marketing technology company using Zendu to actually build marketing tech products like loyalty systems, uh, like getting viral growth you know, with our sidechain tech, with getting uh, incentive-based uh, growth, growth mechanisms in place across the board. So actually could not be more excited to add now our latest ecosystem company. You've got the Zen Blockchain Foundation, you've got Horizon Labs, and you've got Pipeline Marketing, or three companies dedicated to growing the ecosystem. Yeah, it's really exciting because it's almost a personal marketing agency working for Horizon. <laughs> so you can't beat that. I know a lot of people want worry about PR and this and that in the crypto ecosystem because it is in its infancy. Now you have a whole company working on the PR for Horizon, Zen, and its users. Um, so did I hear you right in you saying that future releases of Sphere, you'll essentially be able to interact with various public side chains all within that wallet? So everything is going to be in house in that dashboard? Yeah, correct. correct. Now, th this next version that's being released with beta next week is going to be one that's specifically on our testnet for, for developers working on testnet. But ultimately, by the time we migrate, so we have like a four-phase migration plan from Zendu on test, on currently parallel testnet to testnet to mainnet. You know, as we go through that migration, Sphere is going to go along with it. And then ultimately, yes, you're going to be able to access public side chains with, with your very own Sphere. That's really exciting. And then batch transactions can work well there because you can yeah. batch off your, your Zen rewards to interact with those various side chains, depending on what uh, businesses decide to build on the Horizon platform. Yeah. You know, and Nick, just in general, because you've been covering us for years now, I, I think we've been, we've talked, you know, more times than I can count, right. which is fantastic. I, I love the support and I love the fact that you've stuck with us. I can say from an outsider's perspective, it could feel like things are going slow. When you look at the grayscale numbers and you say, okay, the, the fund flows for Zen are flat right now. It's taking another six months for another Zendu release or, or whatever. What we've been doing is we, we chose you know, very, very, uh, very deliberately the hard path, right? There was an easy path where we could have gone down a, a much you know, shorter delivery cycle, uh, open source routes and getting products to market, but they were much less meaningful. We chose a hard path with Zendu. We chose a hard path bringing you know, Sphere by Horizon in-house and just doing all of the things right, making sure that we have legal infrastructure in place, which is part of the contributing factor mm -hmm. of the CRC ranking. Right? We just do things right. We're kind of like the Boy Scouts of the industry. We're not about flashy headlines and, and all that, just trying to get hype. Uh, but now I, I can say I'm more, more excited than ever about where we've come because we've put in the hard work. Now expect to see things accelerating big time across the board. All right, and the reason I followed uh, Horizon for so long is due to the fact of the way you guys are building and you guys have constantly been uh, growing as far as the metrics I see on your monthly and quarterly calls, as far as the community keeps growing, user base keeps growing. That's all the things I like to look for. Also usability. If I'm going to own Zen or have nodes or whatever it may be, the end goal is to be able to use that to interact with meaningful products that, that can benefit my everyday life. And we'll see if uh, some sidechain applications do do that. Um, also talking about that, uh, that kind of makes your relationship with Charles Hoskinson uh, even even funnier because they kind of chose the same approach. They had a lot of doubters, and now they're they're seemingly starting to produce everything on the roadmap, and everything's supposed to be launched by the end of this year, as far as Shelley is concerned. Uh, so I'm excited to see if Horizon can kind of follow in the footsteps of Cardano, at least from a development perspective, and continue to meet these roadmap goals. And eventually, uh, the hype and the user base comes on its own as the products are launched. Right. No, Nick, I completely agree. So that's the plan. Perfect. Did I miss anything else? Before we end this little recap, uh, we went over side chains, heap, HDE, grayscale. Did I miss anything that you want to mention before we kind of head out of here? Hey, th this is a, a tiny detail, but it's just so cool to see how, how much of a load of work the team does. We just also released a new uh, 
new website version. So come check out horizon.global. We have horizon.io actually going live. If you go to horizon.io right now, it redirects, but it, that domain will be live uh, very soon. But just uh, you know, enormous amount of work that the team's doing. You know, I, I'm just humbled to be part of just you know, truly one of the best in class teams in the industry. Well, thanks for uh, coming on here today. Uh, let me know your guys' thoughts on Horizon and Zen. All the important links will be in the link uh, description or the comment section below. Um, like Rob said, I was going to say, check out horizon.global for more information to see how you can get involved, whether it be on the node sector, the proof of work sector, trading. There's a place for everybody uh, with Horizon. And let's see where this all leads leading into the future. Um, hopefully the beta goes out as planned and we can get the mainnet side chains out quickly. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it. Until next time, guys, stay tuned for your daily updates on cryptocurrencies right here at Learn Crypto. Warren Buffett, American investor, business tycoon, and one of the wealthiest people in the world once said, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. But how is that possible? Well, knowledge is power. In 2020, it is no longer news that cryptocurrencies are the currency of the digital future. Bitcoin stability amidst unprecedented global economic impacts from COVID-19 has proven once again that crypto is here to stay. Learning how to trade, when to trade, and where to trade crypto assets can make the difference between success and failure. At LearnCrypto.io, we offer a pathway to sustainable and lifelong wealth by helping open-minded beginners and experienced traders navigate the thin ice of the cryptocurrency markets. Live shows, interviews, coin reviews, fundamental analysis, predictive trading bots, and open chat access to a community of real traders. These are just a few of the benefits you'll receive with a membership on Patreon.com forward slash Learn Crypto. Sign up today if you strive to build yourself a brighter tomorrow.